Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the major stories from around the world. Let's take a look at the headlines. Indian farmers conclude protest after state government accepts demands. Mexicans march on the anniversary of the expropriation of oil resources. And Bangladeshi journalists condemn police repression. In our first story, Indian farmers who were on a long march in the state of Maharashtra concluded their protest after the government accepted their demands. Tens of thousands of farmers had begun the march on March 13th. The farmers were led by the All India Kisan Sabha, a left-wing farmers' organization. The farmers had a 17-point charter of demands, the most important of which was on remunerative crop prices, especially for onions. They also sought ownership rights on forest land to tribal farmers, immediate financial relief of 600 rupees per quintal to onion growers, and ensuring a 12-hour continuous power supply and farm loan waivers. The government was forced to accept the demands after several rounds of negotiations. Speaking at a public meeting announcing the victory, farmers leader J.P. Gavit said that a committee had been formed to look, look into the implementation of some of the demands. For some of the other demands, the government has announced steps for implementation. One protesting farmer, Pundalik Ambojadav, died during the protest. Shortly after the 250km march began, the government promised it would accept the demands. However, the farmers were not convinced as the government had gone back on similar promises before. Hence, they halted their march but declared that they would not return until concrete steps were taken. Following this, the Chief Minister of the State, Eknath Shinde, spoke in the state's legislature on the issue and details were also provided to the farmers on the implementation of the demands. Maharashtra was also the venue of the historic Farmers' Long March of 2018, where tens of thousands marched from Nashik to the state's capital, Mumbai. India's farmers and workers are also set to hold a major mobilization across the country on April 5th to push for a variety of demands. In our second story, thousands are mobilizing in Mexico City's Zocalo on March 18th to mark 85 years since the expropriation of oil resources by former President Lazaro Cardenas. The mobilization was called by the current President Andres Manuel López Obrador AMLO, who has linked the move by Cardenas 85 years ago to his administration's current efforts at building energy independence. The oil expropriation degree of Car by Cardenas in 1938 ordered the expropriation of oil fields, machinery, installations, distribution stations, pipelines and other physical assets of 17 foreign companies and their subsidiaries that had control over the industry. This meant that Mexico's oil resources and industry would benefit the people and strengthen the national economy. The major motivation for the decision was labour conflicts between workers and foreign oil companies over salaries and working conditions. With the expropriation and founding of Mexico's state oil company, Pemex, three years months later, Workers in the sector were not only empowered by the President's intervention on their behalf, but their conditions also saw significant improvement. The March 18th mobilization also marks one month since AMLO decreed the nationalization of the country's lithium, approved in April 2022 by the Mexican Congress. Lithium is classified as a critical mineral and is used to manufacture rechargeable electrical batteries used in a variety of electronics such as cars, computers and cell phones. Sitlali Hernandez, the Senator and General Secretary of the ruling leftist party, Morena, told People's Dispatch that the 85-year anniversary, I'm quoting here now, comes at an interesting moment wherein it's important to reiterate the call for national sovereignty. For Hernandez, the nationalization of lithium is, again to quote her, a parallel of what oil expropriation meant in 1938. Since taking office in 2018, the AMLO government has launched an ambitious program to recover the country's oil industry to decrease imports of crude oil and increase processing of oil in refineries. The recovery was also done with the intention to control the price of fuel and avoid the surprise fuel hikes that happened during his predecessor's government. The government's energy secretary has declared that by 2024, the country will have energy self-sufficiency and they will no longer need to buy diesel or gasoline from abroad. And finally, the Dhaka University Journalists Association condemned the police action at the Supreme Court on Wednesday in which 10 journalists were injured. The DUJA described the incident as heinous and demanded justice. To quote the DUJA, the way the police have attacked journalists on the premises of the highest court of the country is totally unexpected in an uncivilized society. So this attack, the constitutionally recognized freedom for the media has been trampled and created a brutal example of human rights violation. This despicable attack is totally against the law. The Association of Bangladeshi Journalists and International Media has also condemned the attack. Scores of journalists were present at the Supreme Court covering the Bar Association election when they came under police attack on March 15th. Among the injured, ATN News journalist Javed Akhtar was described to be in a critical condition, according to TBS News. A number of prominent civil society members also condemned the police action, stressing that this attack on journalists inside Bangladesh's highest court provided a brutal example of the state using the police as a means of repression. In the past decade, at least 15 journalists have been killed in Bangladesh, as estimated by five UN Special Rapporteurs last year. 
A recent example of violence against journalists is the abduction and assault of Abu Azad on December 25th last year. Prior to that, Sagar Sarovar and Mehroon Rooney were stabbed to death at their homes in 2021. The violence has not come solely at the hands of the police. Representatives of the Awami League, which is a ruling party, and its supporters have been harassing and physically attacking journalists as well. Reporters Without Borders has registered seven such serious attacks in the past two months. And that's all we have time for today. We'll be back with more news on Monday. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.